And today we have a lot of great information to give you about the French language. And I know we're going to move forward today. It's going to be great. I hope you have your cahier, your notebook, un stylo, your pen, or un crayon, a pencil. So here we go. I want to start out today by reviewing those numbers that we did last time we were together. The numbers can be a little challenging, as we talked about before, but I bet you've been practicing them, and I bet you're doing just fine with them and probably learning them and really becoming solid on them. I hope that's the case. But let's start out by putting the numbers 1 through 10 on our board, and I'm going to say it, and you repeat it. So listen and repeat. Écoutez et répétez. Un. Deux. Trois. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Very good. I know you did great. Let's take 11 through 16 now. 11, 12, 13. 14, remember Q-U sounds like a K, 15, 15, and 16, says. All right, now why did we stop at 16? Because once we hit 17, we start a, you guessed it, a pattern. So now we're just gonna, we're just gonna say 10, 17, 8, 10, 9. Here we go, 17, 17, 18, 19, and that brings us to 20, which is 20. All right. Now, we really don't need to go over all the numbers between 30 and 99 because we know it's a pattern. And remember, we just have to put the word and when we say 21, 31, 41, 51, etc. Other than that, we're just simply going to say 22, 33, 44, etc. So let's try 21. Say 21, now 22, 22, all right, now let's go to 30, think you're getting the pattern down with no problem, 30, say 30, now 31, 31, 32, 32, just simply those two words, no and, very good, now 40, 40, all right, work on saying that R back there, 40, 50, 50, 60, 60. All right, now we get to 70. This is where the fun begins. We have to simply do a little math or we just simply have to learn the name of the number. Either one is fine, whatever works best for you. We all learn in different ways, don't we? So whatever works best for you. So we're really saying for 70, 60, 10. So say 60. All right, now for 71, we're saying 6011. 11. Great job. Now, 420s is how we say 80. 80. 81, we're saying 420s, 1 with hyphens. 81. Okay, now move up to the 90s. 90, again, we're saying 420s, 10. 90. And 91, we're saying 420s, 11. 91. And 100, 100. All right, great job. Now, today we're going to continue our numbers and we're going to look at those in betweens from 100 on up. Now, we've already learned that 100 is 100. Uh, let's put it with a couple of random numbers. I want to put the number 103 up here right now. 103. So usually we don't have a problem putting these words together. It's whether or not we say the word and. Even sometimes in English, I have students who are native English speakers say, wait, do we say and right here or just the number? So we all do this. We have these questions. So just to clarify, 103. We're, gonna, we're really just going to say 100, which is 100, and we're going to say 3, which is 3. So 103 would be this, 103. 110, you've probably already guessed it, 110. 110. All right. 
you can see the pattern already, I know. So let's look at the one, the hundreds beyond 100. 200, uh, we're gonna do this a lot like we do in English. We, in English, we don't say 200s. We don't make that plural, and we don't in French either. So 200 is simply 200. 200. 300, you can probably already guess, 300. 300. 400. 400, 400, 500, 500, 500, 600, 600, 600, and you can probably guess what 700 is, 700, 700, 800, 800, 800, and 900, 900. 900. All right, and we already talked about a thousand, which is mille, and million, which is a million. Take those, put them together. You can probably count as high as you want now. Very easily. Keep working on those numbers. Now, we'll bring numbers back in later when we talk about how to state our age, because we don't necessarily do that the same in uh, French as we do in English. Okay, so we'll revisit those numbers a little bit when we talk about age. Right now, Let's go on to some other things. We talked about greetings in a previous class, <clears throat> and we uh, learned how to say bonjour, ça va, oui, ça va. I want to bring in another word, this one here. The word is se, C apostrophe E-S-T. Now, this word is a combination of two words. It's a combination of this word, which is se, C-E, and the word e, E-S-T. Now, ce can mean that or this, but because we put it next to the word e, which is E-S-T, we're going to remember what happens when we have that vowel and followed by a vowel beginning the next word. We're going to take off that last vowel on the first word and make it an apostrophe. So in the word ce, which is C-E, that the E goes away, we make an apostrophe, and we connect it to the word e. So se means that is, or it is, or if you see someone, oh, that's, that's so-and-so over there, or that is a book. Um, all those kinds of things can be used with the word se, can be stated with the word se. All right, so now we're gonna erase, and let's use this in context. I'm asking, you know, Michel, we think that's a girl's name, but in France, Michel is a guy's name. It's actually the name of my French family's father. So that's why I'm using it. I'm very fond of these people. So if I'm saying, hey, is that, is that Michel? Look at this. C'est Michel? C'est Michel? Yes, that is Michel. Oui, c'est Michel. Oui, c'est Michel. Okay, now I'll see somebody else I know. Oh, c'est Alice. Remember, the T at the end now has to carry over. We have to say that T because it's followed by a vowel in the name Alice, Alice. C'est Alice. Now, the word no, we haven't really, haven't brought that in yet. It's N-O-N. Non. Remember, we're going to put that last in in our nose, kind of nasally. Non. The first one, because it starts the word, we say it like the English N. So, non. C'est Sylvie. So, look at this. C'est Alice. Non. C'est Sylvie. All right. Now, we're going to really start bringing this in uh, with a lot of our future context. We're going to talk about how do we address people when we're talking to them. Now, I know you've heard of all of these words before. The first one here is monsieur, monsieur, mon, in the nose because it's by itself in the middle, and sieur, in the R in the back. Monsieur means mister or sir, okay? So monsieur. Now we have a lady who is married. Um, madame, madame, and this one, mademoiselle, mademoiselle. Mademoiselle is a young girl, unmarried, and so we call her mademoiselle. And that's a combination of a couple of different words that in French that mean my uh, lady or my damsel, and if you want to go back to older terms, that's really what it means, mademoiselle. All right, so let's kind of put that together with se for a few moments. C'est Madame Lenoir. Is that Madame Lenoir over there? C'est Madame Lenoir. 
Or you could ask, is that Mr. Brel? C'est Monsieur Brel. C'est Monsieur Brel. Now we can respond. No, c'est Monsieur Barcelo. No, c'est Monsieur Barcelo. Okay, so there's a little bit of a negative response to it and how to bring in that no with the word c'est. All right. Now, a couple of words we didn't talk when we were discussing greetings, greetings before. We didn't talk about a couple of other little ones that I want to just bring in for a moment. One, you know, somebody asks you, uh, ça va, how are you? One that we did not mention was pas mal. Now, this one, you can now bring this into your conversation. Pas mal, P-A-S means not. And mal obviously means bad. We have words in English that have mal in them, like malignant. So you can relate that uh, to meaning bad because we know malignant is not good. Um, somebody says, ça va? You can say, so, so, this one, comme si, comme ça, comme si, comme ça. Now, just a quick grammar reminder. I said, comme si, comme ça. But notice the accent under ça that tells us to say s. So why is there not one under the first one, which is c, c, i? Well, we don't need it there because typically a C before an I is always going to sound like S in French. So when we say comme si, we really don't need it. It's already there. We already know it's going to be a S sound. But now, C before an A in French is going to be K. So this little accent here tells us, nope, say it like a S. So you can say comme si, comme ça. I'm so-so. I'm okay. All right. So throw that into your bank of greetings and Practice. If you got somebody in your house that's interested in learning French too, have a conversation with them. Greet them every day with all these various greetings and practice those. All right, we're going to move into a new territory of grammar for a few minutes, and we need to talk about gender today. Gender. Gender exists in French <clears throat> in an interesting way. Now, obviously, we have gender in terms of male and female, but when we talk about gender in the French language, we typically mean nouns. Now, nouns in French all have a gender, and we'll learn later that words that describe the nouns must match that gender as well. We'll get to that later. But gender is either masculine or feminine, and every single word in French, a noun, has it's either masculine or feminine. Now, how do we know if it's masculine or feminine? A lot of people are going to tell you, well, you just have to learn those as you're learning the word. So when you learn the word book, you learn that it's masculine. And that is somewhat true. Now, there are ways. This depends on how deep you want to go in French. There are ways to learn how to tell whether a noun is masculine or feminine by looking at the ending of the word. But I am going to tell you up front. That takes quite a bit of study. Now, research that on the internet. How do you tell if a, ver if a noun is mas masculine or feminine? You're going to find some websites that give you great information. When you get into those websites, you will learn that it's going to take some study. Because if you start grouping these endings together, you see that masculine endings, there are lots of them. And there are lots of feminine endings as well. If you sit down and memorize all the different types of masculine endings and all the different types of feminine endings in French, you would be able to guess with about 80% accuracy on all nouns in French. Not 100%, about 80% accuracy. I, when I learned French, I simply learned as I learned the word, whether it was masculine or feminine. Now, I'm going to suggest to you, if you don't want to do all of that studying and learning the endings, the best thing for you to do is internalize, which means you learn a word, you say it and use it so much that it starts to sound right to you. And if somebody uses a different, the wrong uh, determiner with it, it would sound wrong to you. Um, in English, for example, you know, if we say, she say, we know that's not right. She says, we do, we know that because we've spoken it so long. So when we learn uh, nouns, uh, one of the best things you can do is practice it over and over until you just know what sounds right, okay? So that just sets up a little bit about gender. 
Let's look at uh, gender really fast. And we're going to talk about the word the for a few moments. Now, there are different ways to say the. First of all, there's this one, L-E. In French, le is how to say the when you're talking about a masculine noun. Look at this word here, le livre. Le livre, that means book, the book. So when we learn book, we have to learn it's masculine. A book is masculine. And you might say, why? Well, we don't really know. It just came from Latin that way. It's just one of those fun things that we have to do in another language we don't do in English. But you can get it. I know you can. Now look at this one, house. La maison. You may already be guessing that la is the way we say the when we're talking about a feminine noun. So here's the book is le livre and the house is la maison. All right. What happens if it's plural? Very easy. It becomes this, le, L-E-S. Not hard to learn, is it? So the book would be le livre, le livre. And the houses would be les maisons, les maisons. Same thing. We just put an S on that noun and we make it les. Luckily, les is both masculine and feminine, okay? So go ahead and bring that into your bank of knowledge. All right, I'm going to introduce in today's episode verbs. Now, we've learned a couple of verbs. I believe we've, we've touched on it a little bit. Um, when we talk about il est and je suis, we've learned the verb être, but now it's time to get into some other verbs. Now, today's verbs I'm going to introduce to you follow a pattern somewhat, but they are common verbs. Now, later we're going to learn patterns that you can use, but these don't necessarily have set patterns. The first verb I want to tell you about today is aller, A-L-L-E-R. Aller means to go. Okay, now I just want you to understand, aller by itself literally means to go. So if I were to say in French, um, I need to go, I need to go, I would use the word aller exactly like it is. Okay, we'll learn the I need later, but the verb aller would be unchanged because it means to go. But now when we want to say I go or you go, or she goes, or we go, or they go. We need to know how to change the verb because it wouldn't sound right for us to say, je allais, would it? That wouldn't work because what do you think that means? I to go. And we know that wouldn't work. It wouldn't work in English. It doesn't work in French either. Je allais doesn't make sense, okay? We're gonna change the verb a little bit so that it does make sense. We do it in English. We don't say she to go. We take off the two, we put an ES on it, and we say she goes. So we modified that verb, changed it. That's all we're gonna do in French as well. Let me show you how to do this. Let's put our chart up, our famous chart, our visual organizer. Now, we're gonna put the conjugations of these verbs, the conjugations, big word for different forms, of these verbs in the chart, and you're gonna be able to start seeing which one goes with which. Okay, so up here on the top left, we're gonna put the word the. Ve, V-A-I-S, all right? So you can imagine already that when we say uh, ve, that goes with the word je, because je lives up here in the top left space of the chart, and then ve, ve goes there. And so if I want to say I go, it's je ve, je ve. So those go together, all right? Let's put the next one up in the middle left is va. Don't say the S at the end, va. Tu vas, you go, speaking to someone I know well informally um, or someone my age that I'm comfortable with. Va, so tu vas. Now, if I wanted to say, are you going, I could flip them and say, vas-tu? could do that as well. We do that in English. Sometimes we say, she is, we flip it and we say, is she? So when we do questions, we do that all the time. Same thing in French, we can flip them. Now, il, elle, and on, they are all down here in the bottom left of the chart. Now, we're going to put the word va there also, no S though, okay, just V-A. So, il va means he goes, she goes, elle va, one goes in general, on va, 
on va. All right? Let's look at the top right. Allons. Allons. Nous allons. We go. And let me tell you something cool about French. In, and it's kind of like English here. If I want to say, let's go, I can do that using this verb as well. I don't even have to say nous. I can say allons, which means let's go. And the next one I can do this with also. Allez. Vous allez. Vous allez means you go, speaking respectfully or speaking to a group of more than one person. Vous allez. Allez-vous? Are you all going? Allez-vous? All right, it's pretty cool, isn't it? It's really easy. Next one, bottom right, vont, vont. They go. Ils vont, they go, elles vont. Either one. All right. Now, let's bring in, make sure you write down some of these nouns coming up. I'm going to tell you some places really quick. And you say, why are you switching gears? You just did that verb. Uh, that's right. What's going to happen is we're going to show you some places in town that you can go. And now you're going to be able to start talking about where you go in town and things you do. It's going to be great. All right, so let's get some places real quick. First of all, the school is l'école. L'école. All right, now I can't tell if that's le or la, can you? Because it's an apostrophe. Why? Because that école starts with a vowel, so it combined together. I'm going to tell you, school is feminine. So think school is feminine. Go ahead and get that in your head. Just assimilate that, put it together. Okay, so l'école is feminine. The next one, we all love to go to this place here, la plage. La plage is the beach. Love it, right? Okay, so la plage and masculine or feminine? Of course, it's feminine. We can tell because of la. Now, sometimes when we're at the beach, we stay in one of these, l'hôtel. L'hôtel, the hotel. Well, school is feminine, but hotel is masculine. Okay, hotel is masculine. All right, so l'hôtel, and notice it's got that accent, the house top over the O. So just something to memorize if you're going to be a really good writer in, in French as well. Okay, this next word, sometimes we need to go here, especially if we're on vacation, right? La banque, la banque, the bank. Obviously, bank is masculine, uh, it's feminine because we can see by the la. And sometimes we might stay in one of these, l'appartement, l'appartement, an apartment. Now, apartment, since it's L apostrophe, is masculine, okay? And the pool is la piscine. We like to have those around when we're on vacation. La piscine, that's the pool. And... We want to mail a postcard from vacation. We go here, La Poste. La Poste. You can already guess that is a post office. And sometimes you may want to go here as well, L'Eglise. L'Eglise. That's church. And by the way, we can't tell, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you church is feminine. It's a feminine word. Now, I hope you never have to go to this place, L'Hôpital. L'Hôpital the hospital, and hospitals are masculine, okay? Here's a couple of general places you may go on a vacation or a day trip. The mountain is la montagne, la montagne. We don't really hear that G, but it's there. And the countryside, out in the country, la campagne, la campagne. That's the country. All right, to work on those, now let's... And get those into your bank. The best way you can do is to practice it with where you're going. Let's look at a couple of sentences. O, now you'll see O-U with an accent on it, means where. O allez-vous? Where are you going? Okay, flip it because it's a question. I'm going to school. Je vais à l'école. Je vais à l'école. Where are you going? Où vas-tu? Où vas-tu? I'm going to the house. Je vais à la maison. Je vais à la maison. Where are we going today? Sometimes our kids ask that, don't we? Où allons-nous aujourd'hui? Uh, aujourd'hui means today. It's a big word, but it means today. Où allons-nous aujourd'hui? Okay. Allons à la piscine. Allons à la piscine. Let's go to the pool. That sounds like a good idea. All right. Now, 
Here's a, a couple other practice sentences for you just to, to use with some of these places. Où va, où va tu? Where are you going? You can say any of those uh, places that we mentioned. Je vais à la banque. Je vais à la banque. Now, ils vont à l'appartement. They are going to the apartment. Okay? Now, if we're talking about just girls, elles vont à la poste. Elles vont à la poste. They are going to the post office. So I'm going to ask you now, où vas-tu? Où vas-tu? Now I'm asking you so you could respond with anything. You might say this, je vais à la montagne. Je vais à la montagne. I'm going to the mountain. Um, another one, uh, où vont-elles? Now we're using they, just the girl version. Où vont-elles? Where are they going? Elles vont à la banque. Elles vont à la banque. Où allons-nous? Où allons-nous? Nous allons à la plage. Nous allons à la plage. You could even say, aujourd'hui. Now, as you can see, what I've been doing here is making an unlimited number of combinations using the places, using the word where, using the verb aller, which means to go. And the combinations and possibility are just unlimited. So I want to encourage you before the next time we see each other to learn these places in town and in various places we can go and practice the verb aller and start having some really good conversations in French. The more you run it, the better you'll have it. Well, friends, that's all the time we have for today. I look forward to seeing you next time. A bientôt et au revoir.